Hello. Have you ever wondered to yourself, is that egg bad? Maybe you've got some eggs in your fridge that are past their expiry date. Or maybe you have a friend with some chickens, lucky you, who gave you some eggs some time ago. Or maybe you have chickens of your own, even luckier you, and you found a nest of eggs that have been sitting under a bush for who knows how long. And you wonder to yourself, are those eggs okay to eat? Or is that egg bad? You'll find answers all over the internet, but many of them are unreliable, misinformed, misleading, just not quite right. So let's see if we can find the right answer, the real answer, the true answer. Is that egg bad? First off, let's deal with the answer you'll find all over the internet, the float test. The float test is a really easy test, and I've even demonstrated it myself in one of my videos. To do the float test, you simply immerse the egg in water. If it sinks and lies on the bottom of the container, the egg passes the test. If the egg floats, it fails. And if it hovers on an angle, that's somewhere in between. The science behind the float test is that the eggshell is semi-permeable. That means it lets air through the shell. Over time, moisture from inside the egg passes out through the shell and air is drawn into the egg. An air bubble forms inside the egg between the outer and inner shell membranes. Eventually, so much moisture is lost and the air bubble gets so big that the weight of the whole egg is less than the volume of water that it displaces. This is the Archimedes principle and in that regard the float test is extremely accurate. The float test can absolutely, accurately, truly tell you whether that egg is heavier or lighter than water. But the problem with the float test is that most people won't tell you that. They'll tell you it has to do with whether the egg is okay to eat or at best how old that egg might be. But actually the float test is answering a completely different question. You didn't want to know about the density of the egg or even how big the air bubble was. In truth, the amount of moisture lost from the egg depends on several factors, including time. Things like the amount of airflow across the egg, the humidity of the air, the air temperature. All of those things have an effect on how fast moisture is lost from inside the egg, how quickly the air bubble grows, and therefore whether the egg passes or fails the float test. The float test can't really tell you how old an egg is, and it definitely can't tell you whether that egg is good or bad. So if we want to know whether an egg is bad, we better understand what we mean by bad. In general, what we mean is that the egg has gone off, gone rotten, become bacterially contaminated, and is spoiled, decomposed, decayed, putrid, unwholesome, fetid, foul, rank, gross. In this sense, bad is not a function of the age of the egg, but a result of microorganisms, typically bacteria, that get inside the egg, multiply, and cause the egg contents to decompose. And this can happen very fast. At room temperature, the number of bacteria in the egg can double every 20 minutes. But without any microorganisms inside the egg, the egg simply gets older, dehydrates more and more, gets lighter and lighter, until eventually what's inside is just a dried up lump of egg protein. So an old egg is not necessarily a bad egg. These eggs, for example, are over two years old. I've had them sitting around in my shed ever since I tried to incubate them and they didn't hatch. Now normally when I incubate some eggs and they don't hatch, I try to open them up to find out what went wrong. I have a video that can help you find out why your egg didn't hatch. 
But in this case, I was so sure that the problem with these eggs were they were not fertile that I didn't even bother to open them. I just put them in the shed and left them there over the summer and the winter and now the summer again. And they've just been sitting there getting older and older and drier and drier and lighter and lighter. Now these eggs definitely won't pass the float test. There's so much air inside them now and they've dried up so much that they're really light and they definitely will not pass the float test. But I reckon that these eggs are definitely not bad. They're not rotten. They're just old and dried up. So I'm going to open up an egg to show you that they're really not rotten at all. Now, don't worry. On your side of the screen, you're not going to smell anything bad if they are rotten. But I'm so sure that they are not rotten that I'll just open one and we can see. Nope, it doesn't smell. The egg is really dried up. There's almost no white left inside. There's just a little bit of dried up yolk that's quite jammy. It's been in an incubator for 21 days, really warm and humid. And then it sat around in the shed for all of these months. You think if anything was going to make an egg go rotten, it would have been those kind of conditions. But this egg is not bad. So even though these eggs are a couple of years old, they're still not bad. They're still not rotten. I wouldn't really want to eat them, but they're not rotten. If you want to know how long you could store eggs and still have them edible, I have a video about that. But you started watching this video because you wanted to know whether that egg was bad. And I haven't told you yet. Let's see if we can find that answer. First off, you can get a really good idea just by looking at it. Before microorganisms can multiply inside an egg and turn it rotten, first they have to get into the egg. Now bacteria are really common around chickens. Chicken poop is full of it. But the eggshell and the bloom around it do a really good job of keeping bacteria out of the egg. That's why it's hardly ever a good idea to wash your eggs. I have a video about that. If the eggshell gets cracked, then those defences no longer work. Bacteria can pour into the egg through the crack, multiply and cause the egg to go bad. So any egg with a crack is much more likely to be bad than an egg with an intact shell and the bloom. So you can check your suspect egg for cracks. Another indication is whether the egg is nice and clean or has a big blob of chicken poop on it. A big wad of wet chicken poop on the outside of the eggshell can soften the bloom coating and allow the bacteria to ooze through the pores of the eggshell. Once again, the outcome is an egg that is bacterially contaminated and it goes bad. So make sure your chickens lay their eggs in nice clean nest boxes. Occasionally you might see an egg with greyish powdery looking spots on the shell. This is mould or mildew. It comes about due to storage in very humid conditions. Although the powdery patches can often be brushed off, some mould organisms can penetrate through the shell and affect the egg inside. So mouldy eggs are bad. If it looks okay on the outside, then we can crack the shell and see how it looks inside. No, not straight into the pan. Crack any suspect eggs one at a time into a clean container first. That way, if you find one bad egg, you don't contaminate your whole breakfast. Now at this point, you're going to be able to recognize a bad egg really easily. But what happens is that most people are looking so closely at the egg that they see things that they think are unusual and odd and start to get suspicious about them. A cloudy egg white is normal in a very fresh egg. 
It's only once the egg is older than a day or so that the dissolved oxygen disperses and the egg white becomes clear. Also more obvious in fresh eggs are the calaisi, the strands of thicker albumin that hold the yolk in place in the center of the shell. Blood spots are normal. They are caused by a rupture of one or more small blood vessels in the yolk at the time of ovulation. People don't like to see them and so commercial eggs are screened and any eggs with visible blood spots are removed before sale. But eggs with blood spots or meat spots are not bad, they're quite safe to eat. Mottled yolks are not exactly normal, they are usually caused by high storage temperature. But although eggs with mottled yolks are not exactly normal, they are safe to eat, they're not bad. You probably know the grey green ring around the yolk that you see if you hard boil an egg too long. That is caused by the unravelling of sulphur bonds that hold together proteins in the egg white. Above 70 degrees Celsius, the sulphur forms hydrogen sulphide, which then reacts with iron in the yolk to form iron sulphide, which is green. Again, the egg and the green iron sulphide ring is perfectly safe to eat. Very occasionally, the egg white could have a greenish tinge caused by a very high level of riboflavin, vitamin B2. Although it looks odd, it's normal. But to be honest, by the time you're looking that closely at an egg, it's already passed the test. The single most reliable way of knowing whether an egg is bad or not is the sniff test. An egg that is bad because it's rotten smells bad. This smell is a result of hydrogen sulphide that's built up inside the egg as the egg proteins denature. The sulphide bonds that hold the protein of the egg together break down and form hydrogen sulphide. Hydrogen sulphide has a really distinctive smell. It's found inside swamps, sewers, tanneries and paper mills. But it's such a distinctive smell that most people will recognize that smell as the smell of rotten eggs. This smell is a dead giveaway that the egg has gone off and is rotten. The only use for a rotten egg is in the compost for the garden. There's only one real problem with the sniff test and that is that some bacteria that cause food poisoning, salmonella, do not produce hydrogen sulphide gas. And so an egg that's infected with salmonella looks and smells completely normal. Now the prevention and control of salmonella in eggs is a completely different question and has nothing to do with whether or not that egg has gone rotten and gone off and is bad because it's rotten. So there you have it. The float test can tell you how dense an egg is and give you an idea of how old it is. And the older it is, the longer any bacteria inside it have to multiply and make the whole thing go rotten and bad and be unsafe to eat. But the likelihood of the egg being contaminated in the first place have more to do with how clean your nest box is and whether it has any cracks or whether the bloom is still intact. By far the best detection device for a bad egg is your nose. If it looks normal and smells normal, by which I mean it really doesn't smell at all, then you can be fairly confident that it's safe to eat. It's not a bad egg. So I hope I've helped you answer that question in a really true, accurate, reliable way. Do join me again to learn more about chickens and eggs the chickens in my garden, and hopefully the chickens in yours. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.